Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit different. I know that some people prefer watching shorter videos, so I figured I would create this new series that's going to be basically commonplace with me, and it's going to be a sort of journal with me that is much shorter, kind of delving into my commonplace system, and it'll usually be maybe like 4 to 10 minutes, never more than that. Uh, so it's not as short as maybe a YouTube short, but also not as long as my usual content, which is more in the 30 plus to an hour range. So yeah, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right in. So I was reading this substack that went out by Pedro Tuma. He's the host for a podcast that I listen to whenever I remember that I like listening to podcasts. <laughs> um, and it's called Poetry Unbound. He is also a poet himself, and he sends out a substack that leads to a prompt. Um, and I believe he does that on a weekly basis, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyways, the one he sent out in November 12th was titled The Art of Editing. And before I talk about why I wanted to commonplace this, I wanted to share some of my favorite quotes from the substack. And my absolute favorite of them will be at the end. But anyways, here are a few of them. Every word matters to me. If I find myself with extra words, I remove them. Editing can seem like a literary exercise, but it ties into a deeper consciousness in us. I rewrite the poem. I write the email, but sleep on it before I send it. I compose a text message, but delete it. I open my mouth to speak, but shut it before I speak. We are all editing ourselves all the time, and that's not necessarily oppressive. Sometimes it's wisdom. I don't have enough information to know what I think is a useful sentence, especially when you have feelings and intuition. For me, the art of poetry and the art of conflict resolution have always been about the same thing, language. What language will I use today? What will its effect be? I fail all the time at this. Edit, edit, edit. It's funny because I find myself thinking about the different ways that this applies to me in my life right now. And like in a more literal, simple sense, I started a YouTube channel recently and that requires a lot of editing. Editing my videos to remove filler words, editing out weird background noises, editing out stumbling, over my words, editing out my cats, jumping in when they shouldn't, editing, editing, editing. You spend more time editing than you do filming. And of course I do that because I want to provide you with the best product possible, the best content. But then I guess also more in line with what Otuma is saying in his sub stack is this idea of editing a voice, of speech, of how you communicate with others. And I relate to that too. As someone with a lot of anxiety, but also a lot to say, I sometimes find myself refraining from speaking for fear of being wrong or saying things in ways that I didn't mean to say them. Fear of not being understood properly. And sometimes that's a good thing. Uh, I have a knack for saying things in a way that can hurt people when I'm upset. And so I try to avoid speaking when I'm angry so that I don't risk ruining relationships that are important to me. But then on the opposite spectrum, I struggle with things like in-person meeting or voice calls more than I do with text messaging or emails because I can't edit myself as freely in those situations and that terrifies me. Really, when I think about it, there's only a select number of people that I feel like I can talk to in this life without needing to edit myself. And I recognize how lucky I am to count with a select few because I know that there's people out there that have less than that. What goes into editing? The art of trying to say something that you wish to last. That one was my favorite quote, I think, of the whole substack. And then that led me to think about this quote uh, that I had seen a blog on Tumblr. And I went in and looked for it. It's by Jeanette McCurdy from her book, I'm Glad My Mom Died. And in it, she says, there's a moment of silence. It's one of those rare moments where I feel like I didn't say too much or too little. I feel like I represented myself accurately and there's nothing I would change. 
about the way I said it. And I don't know, I just, ultimately this isn't a video for a call of action or anything like that. It's uh, just a little sample of how I commonplace and it usually involves compilations of different things that I read or saw that lead me to think about other things that I read and saw and just thinking about how we all just want to be heard and understood at the end of the day to be seen the way that we wish to be seen and to not be misinterpreted and how sometimes that is easier than other times that's easier for some more than others and back to the original context of the love stack Frederick Osuma is talking about editing in terms of his poetry and editing his poems right so in a literary sense in a writing sense and that led me to think about this quote that I had read by Matilda Bernstein Sycamore and she said I mean I'm writing to remember I'm writing to remember I'm writing to remember but I am also writing to challenge memory we're back at the gaps the places where language stops let me in and yeah it just all got me thinking about how amazing it is to be able to communicate with each other how beautiful language is even if it can be scary even if it can be difficult and complicated even if we do struggle to be understood all in all the things that we say or don't say and the way that we say them leaves an impact on those around us here's to saying what needs to be said here's to saying what we want to say and here's to editing ourselves to be better understood but never to remain silent